Bhaktivina Tasmai Shri Guru Vena Maha Shri Chaitanya Manobi Stam Stapitam Yena Bhutala Ismayam Nupakadam Mayam Dadati Svaradati Kama Namam Vishnu Padaya Krishna Kristaya Bhutala Shimakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tiname Namaste Saraswati Devi Gauda Vani Pracharine Nirvasisa Sunya Vani Prasthyatyare Satarine Panchakalpa Dhu Vishya Kripa Sindhu Veva Cha Patitanam Bhavane Bhyo Vaishnave Bhyo Namaha Maha Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Vedakar Sri Vasari Gaur Bhaktarinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. So yesterday we uh, pursued the topic of relationships. Um, today we'll uh, continue with that topic, but in a specific manner. Uh, and that is our relationship as a parent to our children. And this may be a little bit exclusive. Not everyone sitting out there on is listening as a parent right now, but maybe some of you have gone through your life and raised children. Others have are in the process of doing that. Others will embark on that shore sooner or later as time moves forward. So this relationship or this uh, mood that is um, apparent to a child is also described very carefully in Srimad Bhagavatam in many places. Well, Bhagavatam gets right to the essence. And then again, people say, well, Bhagavatam is not so relevant because Bhagavatam is dealing only with, you know, Vedic culture. We still have modern culture. We have changes in life. The world's not the same as it used to be. Perhaps the scriptures need to be, not that they're wrong, but they need to be updated to include a lot of other factors that are there in people's lives today. But um, that's that's one way of look, becoming a liberal <laughs> in the sense that one is seeing that, uh, you know, what the scriptures teach is incomplete. The only thing is that it may appear that way because it needs to be applied and maybe and it has to be applied according to time, place, and circumstance. The application is always somewhat slightly different according to the changing times, but the principles that govern the applications are solid, foundational, and never changing. So again, I'll refer to His Holiness Shiva Ram Maharaj. And with reference to this topic, and is what is the duty of a parent? In the scriptures, it says, "Itana sasya janane natasya namocha yadya samupeti umitu." The parent's duty, and this verse is really quite direct. It's from the fifth canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, chapter five. Verse number 18. And it gets right to the point. It says, don't become a mother. Don't become a father. Don't become a teacher. Don't become a guru. If you are not qualified or not willing to try to deliver your children, your disciples, your students, from the cycle of birth and death. So in other words, a parent has to be able to open the door to higher consciousness for their children. In other words, the door to self-realization. 
today's world, just look at it in a general sense, not specifically in devotee arenas, but in a general sense, where is this topic taught? Hardly at all, maybe not at all, maybe only in devotee circles to some degree. Even then that needs to be. Nowadays, we find even in devotee circles, children are more prone to the media, the internet, social media, smartphones, the trends that go on in society, and very much conscious of external appearances. Uh, with these things come a kind of a material consciousness that sort of directs people towards, you know, find, trying to fulfill these things, which means um, making money or getting money, becoming a good consumer, staying up with the fads, staying up with the, uh, the social fabrics. Nowadays, children have lost a sense of responsibility in their roles as children to their family and to those that they have relationship with. And children have a tendency to now move into the area of entitlement. I'm entitled to make my own choices. I'm entitled to get this. I'm entitled to do what I want to do. In other words, the mood of responsibility has been slowly but very continuously pushed out with the mood of self-expression towards what society is offering. And Children don't spend enough time outside because of computers, because of cell phones, because of the whole media. And you see, the children are not so healthy. Even amongst young children, they get a lot of sickness, especially lack of exercises. And when I was growing up, one thing that was very big amongst children was playing games or playing sports, especially playing sports, especially for men, even for women. And, uh, you know, exerting your natural tendencies in a competitive way that was somewhat guided by proper, uh, by accepting what was the norm. Nowadays, what is the mood? It's, you know, video games or various types of uh, infatuations with something new on the media. Yeah. I've seen children who are like seven years old. They are expert at using computers, sometimes as good as an IT person. <laughs> They grow up with computers. And uh, a lot of times you find after a few years, they're wearing glasses because they spend so much time on the computer. And uh, the relationships are mostly based through the media. So our, uh, and they've lost a sense of um, what it means to have healthy relationships with other children and at the same time take a responsibility within the family uh, as a child and uh, learn what needs to be learned in order to grow up and take on responsibilities in later parts of life. And this is a thing that it's important for parents to teach It says here, 
most young. Uh, therapists are saying that parents are held responsible for what? For not being emotionally accessible to child. Now here we switch to where the, the, the parents are. The parents are not taking enough, are not investing enough emotional time with their children to hear from them, to talk to them, to guide them and to uh, correct them. Uh, the parents being constantly engaged also on distractive things and thus unavailable for their children. The parents fail to, to give clear definitions of what is proper conduct and what is not. We mentioned responsibility, that's not being taught. And another thing is to teach them, you know, proper hygiene, especially how to eat properly instead of using junk food. I know a lot of kids, they just, I know why some children that just, they just like Italian food. They eat pasta, they eat pizza, you know, they eat uh, you know, spaghetti. In other words, they're just always on that, that one way. They like it. They don't get a balanced diet. They usually don't grow up. And later on, they find themselves with some, some health problems. So yeah, parents don't take time or they consider, well, let the child do what they want because you know, if we get too oppressive with them, then they just will rebel. But there is a limit and on how much you want to control your child's life. It's not like we are constantly on top of them. We have to teach them how to become responsible by giving them activities that help develop responsibilities. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll give you an example in my own life. Because my parents didn't have money, I never got an allowance. And so any money that I needed, I had to earn myself. They weren't gonna give me any money because whatever little bit of money my father made, you know, was needed in order just to keep the household going. And so um, I had to work. <laughs> and I was out there as a young boy, you know, uh, doing little odds and ends jobs in order to uh, to, uh, you know, if I needed any expenses, it was coming by my own efforts to get the money like that. So there was a sense of responsibility for my own needs like that. A lot of times, you know, children think that their parents are the supply agent for everything they need. Uh, because there is such a demand in society for new things, the parents become the object like that. And that really, that's called spoiling the child, not giving them a sense of responsibility and also teaching them what is needed and what is not needed. But these are some of the things that um, let me see here. We'll, These are some of the things we can look at in terms of uh, how to take care of children or uh, how allow them to grow in the proper way. Hmm, we'll be right back. A lot of, we find the statistics in the world today, a lot of children are going through a lot of emotional upheavals. In the last 15 years, it has said that 
one in every five children, children now, not teenagers, have mental health problems. This is coming from, you know, the World Health Organization statistics. 43% of attention deficit hyperactive disorder, meaning children are hyperactive. Put them in front of a, a screen, television, or whatever, it increases their hyperactivity. And this is proven. Sometimes, well, one time it was thought that, well, because my child is hyperactive, I put them in, in front of a television and that quells their hyperactivity. No, and I actually, it just, it just uh, postpones it. And when they leave the, you know, the media, their hyperactivity increases actually. Uh, over the years, there's been a 35, 37% increase of teenager depression. And over the last few years, 200% increase in suicides amongst children between the age of 10 and 14. Can you imagine 10 year old children committing suicide? Well, these these are these are usually done in more highly developed countries, such as the United States, and you know like France or Britain, South Africa. In other words, those places where there are you know that modernization has reached a, a height of you know going everywhere and anywhere in the lives of everyone you find less, these, the percentages are less and more simple in rural lifestyles. Children should be taught not what they want, they should be taught what they need. Don't be afraid, don't be afraid to say no, set limits on what they can do and what not they can do involve them in daily chores. This is important. Keep them busy in making them a part of the household responsibility of getting things done. Again, this is they, this gives them the sense of uh, sense of worth and sense of contributing to the overall household. If the child is less than 15 years old, then you're a parent. The child becomes 15, 16, then the tendency is to, not the tendency, but is the way is to treat them more like a friend. But in that friendly relationship, you're always um, encouraging the right activity. Uh, check and see, does your children ever ask you what is the goal of life, how to attain that goal, why do I have to suffer, why can I always get what I want, why do I get disappointed a lot, of, you know, and there's a lot of questions that the children should be asking. So children are important. We want to help them develop a well-balanced emotional, mental, and spiritual uh, outlook in life, especially the spiritual. But unless we develop the emotional as the foundation, the spiritual will not be able to be implemented in their life. They have to be emotionally stable. And that's difficult in today's society because of the influence of the media and the influence of peers. Uh, other children affect or influence our own children accordingly. It depends to their influence to some degree or other, depending on, the, on their own natures. But therefore, the parents, it says the parents are the original gurus of their children and they must guide them for responsibility, teaching them what's right, 
what's healthy, what to avoid, like that. And then as they grow up, once they have the basis, they're more likely to make the right choices. If you don't give them a chance to learn, how will they ever make the right choices? And we also say the children are the future of the world. What, who, those who are our children now will become adults later and they will be in the position of moving things on a larger scale. So um, we want our children to be Krishna conscious, but we also want them to have a balanced life in all other areas of it. So it's a duty of a parent. And um, what it needs to be emphasized is that we need to take time to do this. It's not like we're too busy. So the children, we just, you know, put the children on autopilot and just hope that they get everything they need. If they don't, we, then we come back in the evening and correct them for whatever went wrong. No, that's not going to work. So um, becoming a parent is a big responsibility. Becoming a teacher is a big responsibility. Becoming a guru is a big responsibility. But responsibilities means um, uh, advancement in life. When one takes on responsibilities and can withhold, uh, uphold their responsibilities, uphold their responsibilities, and make those responsibilities into something fruit, fruitful for everyone involved, then those persons who do that, they make advancement in life, especially on the spiritual platform. They receive a lot of mercy. <laughs> so it's a big, we use the word big, we might say maybe that's not the proper word, but it's a great responsibility to be in charge of the lives of others, especially our children. We have to let them grow, but at the same time, we have to guide them. You can't be on, on top of them every minute, but at the same time, you have to give them everything they need to grow. As time goes on, as the world becomes more and more segregated into different categories, it becomes harder and harder for parents to, to guide children. At the same time, it becomes harder and harder for parents and children to want to accept simply the guidance of their parents and everything. They want to get, they want to get things from the outside. Okay, I just wanted to touch on this subject because it's it's part of a bigger thing called relationships and that's the main topic. What is our relationships with our children? What is our children's relationships with everything else that they're connected with? So we'll stop here. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you very much. I think it's a really, really very required session uh, for most of the parents, I would say in this uh, series. And uh, uh, even like if we are not parents, then also I think it's very useful because we are, like children are always surrounding uh, in temples and other places. So it's very good. So um, uh, Hare Krishna, dear devotees, if you have any questions, you can unmute yourself now. Or if you want me to read any questions, then you can type in chat window. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada and your holiness. Guru Maharaj, uh, thank you so much uh, for this uh, wonderful session today. Uh, it's very important uh, uh, for me. Um, I have a question like, uh, Nowadays, I see children, uh, they don't want to take any responsibility. They just want to um, be like free without anything uh, told to them and just want to uh, do whatever activities they are doing right now. They don't want to take up any extra uh, thing or any responsibility, um, even though they are growing and we expect a lot from them. 
as a parent. So, so how to encourage them, Guru Maharaj? Um, so how to? Uh, yeah. Well, it's the influence of today's world because of it's children years ago weren't so much like that, but it's now they have this mood of entitlement and the advertising that comes out on the media doesn't discriminate that everyone should have every opportunities for everything and because they like certain things and there's so many things out there that they might like you know that becomes more important again it's entitlement instead of responsibility so um yeah you put your finger on one of the main problems with children nowadays and growing up how to overcome that well i think we have to let them know know that there is in the family you know you're taking care of them and You're taking care of them. And so they have some responsibility to reciprocate and in their own life to become part of the family. And children get this idea that the parents just give, 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 and the children just take, take, take. And that's where the problem is. So, um, you know, I was forced into situation when I was young that if I wanted money I had to earn it on myself of course we never thought of doing it only in the right way and so for young kids in those days it was easy to find a little job I used to deliver papers to people's houses in the winter time I would always go shoveling snow and make money and uh, you know sometimes looking for different ways to uh, do some chores that would bring in some money. So I was forced to live like that in order for me to, to get anything. If I wanted anything on my own, I had to earn it. Uh, but nowadays, the parents seem to be the, the uh, what is it they call it, the... Uh, <laughs> The automatic money machine, right? You go and request it and you push the button and you get it, you know. <laughs> We're afraid to say no to the parent, children, for whatever reason. But giving them the responsibility, but teaching them the importance of responsibility simultaneously, not just giving them responsibility. You have to make, let them know it's important. And if they don't learn that when they get old, they will get older when responsibility becomes a requirement in life. They might find themselves having difficulty doing things because to the, learn, the, learn, the longer you learn in life, the later you learn in life, that's what I really want to say. The later you learn in life, the more harder it is to change when, when there is a need to change. There's a story of uh, Diogenes. Diogenes was a Greek philosopher and teacher, and he would teach children, and the parents would bring their children to Diogenes, and he would instruct them. So one lady, she came and to Diogenes, she addressed him and said, my dear master, um, I have a child, which I would like to give him to you for education. And the uh, Diogenes responded, how old is the, the boy? And the, the mother said, well, he's five. And Diogenes said, well, we are already five years too late. Bring him immediately. So we get the point that the longer you wait to instruct and guide the children, the harder it becomes because 
they, they're taking on more and more other things and developing habits and tendencies in those areas. So, yeah. But I would say that you teach them you're part of this family and not just, you know, somebody who comes into the family and, uh, you know, just takes advantage of being in the family. This is where children are a little bit, you know, they're like that nowadays. They want, they just want things rather than trying to take responsibility for everything, uh, you know, as is mentioned, give them some household chores to do. Taking out the garbage, you know, cleaning the kitchen, doing other things. Not that we're lazy and we can't do this. It's just we want to teach them that you're living in the home. <laughs> you also must participate with these things. And it's good for them, even though it may be menial work. Uh, but there's a lot of other things. We also have to be responsible, responsible in our own life because children will notice what their parents do or don't do. And they will try, sometimes they will see if they see something that apparently is wrong, you know, they'll also find reasons not to follow the parent saying you're doing this wrong why should i follow you so parents have to be ideal in their own behavior this is not an easy i'm not i'm not a, a uh, I'm not a family, you know, counselor. I think we got Sri Devi on the line. She's always there every day. She's more in, she can give a lot of advice with family counseling. But um, these are the, some of the things we can learn and just in practical understanding. It's good, Madam GM. Thank you so much. Yeah, even uh, I encourage my children uh, to do a lot of, um, and to do some chores in, in the house because uh, in childhood, I used to do a lot of things at my home also previous um, in my childhood. So that's what even I believe like um, they should do work in the house so that they learn. And when they are independent enough, um, they can survive easily without the help of mom and dad. So yeah. If they don't learn it when they're young, it's going to be very difficult for them to learn it when they need it. They need to learn it. Thank you so much. Gurmaraj, we can't see you, Gurmaraj. Your video is off. You can't see me? Oh, my yeah. video. Okay. I'll, that's better, right? Yes, Gurmaraj. Anything else? Mm -hmm. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada and all glories to you. I um, thank you for this topic. I, you know, I myself was not a parent, but I was teaching in the uh, school system and I could, I, I just wondered, um, is this not also the part of the government's fault? I, you know, the students would not do anything. You know, if we would assign homework, this was going on, I would say the last eight years, it was very, very difficult to teach them, very difficult. Um, we would assign homework and they just simply would not do it. And I mean, I would, I would assign things or I would give certain rules for the classroom and they wouldn't listen to me. And if I, um, 
if I demanded that they do it to be in my classroom, then the parents would come and yell at me. They would go to the principal and say, oh, she's being unreasonable to my child, et cetera. And uh, the learning was very, very difficult because uh, a lot of the kids had, to, as, you, as you pointed out, like attention deficit disorder, um, you know, they had a lot of learning disabilities, emotional disabilities, and, you know, to try to get them to calm down, it would take like 20 minutes just to get them to, to do one activity in the lesson. And I, you know, a, a, there was more than one time where I almost got fired because I dared to, uh, you know, make them do certain things to get to get them settled down. And so I, 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 feel, I felt at a loss. Um, I was so happy to get out of the school system. The only, believe it or not, the only children that seemed to be um, manageable. Well manageable. Yeah, the, the, the Indian children and the, the Asian children, the Chinese children and the Asian children, they would listen to me. Other than that, it you know, the Western children, they, I mean, they would throw things it, 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 and these were in very, I was in a very good school system. This was not just a, an inner city school. And I, I really felt that the parents had a lot to do with it, but also the way we don't demand enough of the kids, uh, the educational system was like that. Also, oh, just pass them through. We don't want any problems. You know, they couldn't even read some of them. They couldn't do anything. And I would say, but they're failing horribly. Well, just be gentle with them. You know, that I felt that this was, I don't know. I, I, I couldn't resolve it. I couldn't resolve it myself. Yeah, I was the, whole, the, whole, the whole system is defunct. I, I, was, I used to go to colleges and high schools and give classes on Krishna consciousness. And I would spend sometimes time with the teachers. Teachers and many, many times would talk about you know, what goes on in the classroom. And I was with this one professor, this was in Chicago. And uh, this was a pretty good college to one of the better colleges. And he was telling me that, you know, they don't do their homework when it comes to the test. They just go, they look, they go through research and find the cliff notes. And then they use that as a way to answer the questions. <laughs> you know what cliff notes are, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So they're too lazy to study. They just go for the cliff notes. <laughs> It is no enthusiasm, in, but you know, part of the problem is just the whole system of this whole school system anyway is they just run it through like a, they don't teach values, they don't teach morality, they don't teach responsibility. They just give these road subjects and nobody's interested anyway. And it's all meant to get you a place in the economic system of society, that's what well, the whole system of schools are are misdirected anyway. And so when you when you you know there's been statistics that show that at a certain age a child has a certain capacity for intelligent understanding, but as they grow other older that capacity is reduced as they go to school. We're not taught to think, we're taught to memorize, that's all. <laughs> I found it very, very frustrating. And I, um, I would go to the administration. In fact, I would go to the school counselors um, and I would tell them, you know, back 15 years ago, I would have a problem with a child and I would bring the child, the, the counselor would immediately come and take care of the problem, call the parent, and it was just not allowed. 
And today, um, if I did this, I do the same thing. And the counselor would start yelling at me that I wasn't, I wasn't uh, treating the child properly. And so this is a big problem. This is a big problem. And the media, as you pointed out, Guru Maharaj, um, it, they, they um, like if I would give a lesson, I'd say, you know what? Open up a dictionary to look up the words. Um, read the passage without going to the computer. And they just, they said, why? This is so much faster. And I said, but that's the problem. You can't, they can't read instructions anymore because they can get to the, uh, they get to the answer so quickly on the computer that they don't know how to read an instruction. They would, I would give an exam and every part of the instruction, they didn't understand it. So I would end up having to explain the whole exam. It would take 15 minutes just to explain what to do. That that was the biggest, there's like, with the media, it seems like um, there's a glitch there. Something gets lost and they can't go from step steps A, B, C, and D. It seems like they're going from step A to E, one, two, three. And I, I don't know that, I found it very, very upsetting. I don't know how I would have dealt with my children at home. Well, that's different. I found the Indian children to be very well behaved. Well, the, the Indian culture, the Chinese culture is a, is a more family oriented society based around certain uh, ancestral values that are based on the, uh, the quality of life. The, nowadays, kids grow up in front of televisions, in front of you know computers, and uh, there's a lot of permissiveness within society. And children are broken out of their limitation early in life and told and, and encouraged to you know try to act like we do. That's why you get you know just like it says. Um, I think in the UK, the United Kingdom, I mean, by the time a child is uh, 11 years old, they've tried to do everything between 11 and 14 years old, they've done everything. <laughs> and you know, that means usually all kinds of wrong activities, you know promiscuousness, intoxications. It's a very, very difficult situation now. That's why we have to institute spiritual values along with material guidance towards, uh, the goal shouldn't simply be, you know, get a nice place in the world or get a nice, you know, nice partner in the world. The goal should be individual development, character development. It's all about character development. So the reason why these other cultures seem to be because that was the end, these other cultures had a more spiritual foundation. In China, it's more like a family tradition. In India, it's more like a spiritual tradition that has allowed for children to be more obedient to superiors. True. Mm -hmm. Yes, the the older cultures seem to they knew how the, the, those students they they were just well behaved they were open to listening um, and I don't know I just I felt very they're getting that they're getting that from home too yes whereas in the Western societies generally not completely generally the parents are you know. They're engaged in a lot of nonsense too. Mm -hmm. What can you expect from the children? When I grew up back in the 50s and the 60s, I went to school. There was like 
And there was nobody I, that I knew in the school whose parents got divorced. Now you don't even talk about that because most of the time children either have one parent or they have a stepmother or a stepfather like that. The social oh. fabric has deteriorated so much that it affects all levels. I didn't I mean, know I'm any. I didn't know any bad girls, and there was one girl in our whole school, and this was this was in in um, high in grammar school up to the eighth grade. There was only one girl who was a little bit loose in her behavior. Everybody else was not. This was back in the 50, 60s, you know. This is you know the early sixties, the late fifties. You see how times have changed now. Well, but, you know, I, I also, well, I, in the 70s, um, you know, my, I was very ashamed because my parents, I, I was one of the few families that, that where there was a divorce and uh, it was, I never talked about it. I was very, very ashamed of it because that was so uncommon at that time. This is like early 70s, but then it started happening after that. You would start to see more of it, but um, if I had not had the grandparents there to take care of me, I, I don't know what would have become of me. I don't know if I would have lived through it, it because it was very, very difficult. Uh, everything you talked about, Guru Maharaj, um, you know, no guidance, just uh, running around, uh, not knowing which way was up. I would have to ask my grandmother about God. You know, I would say, well, why are people acting like this? Why are they so mean? And, you know, she was the only one that gave me any God consciousness. And she did tell me, she said, oh, I don't know why they're like this. You have to ask the God. You know, she would say that to me all the time. And uh, she would say, everybody needs God. They, they act like they don't need, but they need God. And, uh, you know, she would tell these things to me. And she took me uh, to church when I was a child or else. I don't think, you know, my, my, my mother would scoot me off to church and she would not go herself. You know, she, she'd get me all dressed so up. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so basically what, what you're saying, you're pointing out this important point is that the influence of the social environment and the influence of peers and peer pressures and peer association requires that the, the parents become more diligent and more aware that they have to take the time to guide their children in the right way. So some some devotees, you know, don't want to send their children to public schools at all, and I don't blame them. Um, and of course, like I'm here in Europe, and in Europe the old communist system is uh, still in effect in certain areas that you have to send your children to schools. But in America, you can, you can do homeschooling. In other places around the world, homeschooling is good. And that's good to help guide the children uh, in a more rounded way and uh, take them away from the, the bad influences that society is. But then you have to balance that out to make sure that they get, you know, enough time to develop friends with children of their own age because that is an important part of their because i know one devotee who was really really strict on his child he was too strict and pushed the children push, pushed him away from everything in society and tried to grow him up just in a spiritual way the child after what some time started to hate his his father and he actually rebelled against him because it was too much. There has to be that balance. But that balance, ultimately, what we're working on as a society, a Krishna consciousness society, is to remove our uh, remove ourselves from all of the society's requirements. In other words, we want to set up our own schools on all levels, not only on the, the smaller level, but even on the higher levels. 
we want to set up our own ways of taking care of our personal needs, such as providing our own food and arranging for whatever we need on all levels. So that's Prabhupada's big picture, what she's, you know, the complete transformation of the whole social and uh, political environment towards, you know, natural living. Natural living allows for the children to get the proper educations they, they need and the proper guidance and the proper spiritual uh, direction that's required. But for now, when that's not there, and many of the children that are devoted children are still going to public schools, it's really important that the parents become very uh, aware of what's happening to their children and make sure they're not influenced in the wrong way. Thank you. Yes, I agree. They're not like like sometimes people say to me, "What do we? Do? How do? What do I? You know, what do I do with my child? How, how can I guide them?" I said, "Well, children usually like kirtan, so engage them in kirtan. Teach them, give them a chance to learn instruments and play, play bhajans and play and get involved in kirtan. It's a good way for the children to." You can get the right association and the spiritual energy or some kind of musical instruments that they can use for glorifying the Lord. That's, that's true, Guru Maharaj. They need some spiritual guidance too. That's not seeing that a lot. Um, I mean, of course, I wasn't brought up in our in the Vedic tradition, but uh, the grandmother would have us do uh, novenas in the house. I would lead the novenas, and all the little Italian ladies in the neighborhood would come over with their rosaries, and we would sit for the whole day, and we would we would uh, pray rosaries. And uh, I learned that from her, you know. So I think that's one of the reasons I was attracted uh, to japa and the Krishna consciousness because we would sing in the house and we had an altar and uh, was you know there was there was some guidance there some spiritual guidance or I don't like I said I, I don't know that I would have made it but um, thank you so much uh, for thank you forward. yeah now everything is external okay any other comments or questions from anyone Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to your holiness. Guru Maharaj, this is such an important subject. Our whole future depends on our families, how our children are being raised. I wanted to point out that today, even if mothers and fathers want to take care of their children, they're so overwhelmed themselves. And if they're single parents, my goodness, it's just a recipe for disaster. The anxiety, the depression, the sheer feeling of being overwhelmed just takes over and just to survive is such a difficult thing. What to speak of trying to be emotionally available for your child? What to speak of being a spiritual guide for your child? Just putting food on the table, just getting through the day is such an uphill battle that uh, Parents are exhausted in their 30s. And you see the children running around and you'd see the children just, uh, you know, unable to, the mothers and fathers are just wringing their hands and saying, what can we do? We go to work. We have to pay the bills. We have to manage to pay off the car note and the bank. This, yeah, that yeah. Our, our lifestyle doesn't allow for family development, you know, natural family development. I mean, therefore, you know, the solution ultimately is Prabhupada's solution is develop rural communities, homeschool the children, and take and, and don't get so much involved with the outside world as far as the, whatever we need to do to live, and keep the, the spiritual values foremost. 
until we do that, I, I, you know, I'm speaking from a more, from a, a less perfect position right now. When we don't have that level of lifestyle, which we should be working towards, I think this is the the future of the world and the future our movement otherwise it's just going to turn into it's already becoming hell right now the world is going it's going to hell um but in the meantime in a, in a more compromised position i think it's that's what we're talking from the compromised position today uh, how to keep things from you know going too far in the wrong directions and that is really giving children more responsibility within the family and taking more time with them for their emotional and physical and spiritual needs. But these two points, I'm just thinking that needs to be emphasized. That's the essence of my presentation. Otherwise, to try to, you know, try to fix something that is not fixable is, you know, it's just like, you're just spinning your wheels. Better just to try to create something that actually works. What is the ideal model? But we're not up to that standard yet. We should be. We should be moving at the ring. But in the meantime, what do we do? And that's what I'm focusing on. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Otherwise, we, <laughs> otherwise, we can just go on complaining about how bad everything is, and that's, and then we can speak like that for, you know, for hours, hours. Yeah, right, just explaining right. how how everything is going wrong, and and it's all true, but it doesn't give you any any right. solace. It doesn't give you any direction. Right, but mothers coming together in a community and doing homeschooling together, doing activities together. Uh, sharing responsibilities, doing daycare together instead of every single mother putting her child in daycare somewhere and going to work, coming together as a collective and doing things, supporting each other, helping each other. That is very, very important for our kids and for our mothers. The poor mothers are just going crazy trying to raise a child in Krishna consciousness. Yeah, it's really difficult. But everything is against you. Okay, so, so that's a little bit more about relationships. We talked a little bit about parenting. I didn't want to get into a, a long discussion on what's wrong because I was trying to just focus on what we can do to improve at least to some degree where it will save the children from going too far astray. And again, it's spiritual values that need to be emphasized. And responsibility within the family. These two things that I, I'm on a, um, giving them spiritual direction and teaching them responsibility as a family member and not somebody who is just there taking and just the parents provide and the kids take that. So. Okay, so Krishna. thank you. So Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, we are eight, running eight minutes over. Uh, can we take one more questions if there is any? Uh, is there any more? I can't see now uh, in chat. All right, so, so we'll, stop, we'll stop here. Sure. Guru Maharaj, can I say one thing like based on my experience? Uh, you have two wonderful children. They're both very obedient and very qualified. So tell us the secret. It's all your mercy, Guru Maharaj. But no, I didn't. I didn't. It's not, it's not my mercy because I had nothing to do with it. <laughs> but one thing I like uh, would like to share uh, that few things which helped Guru Maharaj. One is uh, like meeting with the devotee families, like that association. And meeting with those children who are where parents are giving right values, spiritual uh, base, 
that really helps because in schools and all like they are meeting all material uh, like things but when they see at home and in weekends uh, more association with devotee it brings them back to like uh, something where they need to be and uh, i also feel being a role model like many times i have seen if i am not doing something they also try to follow that okay fine so we have to take our own control like in many things whether it's a question of a few behaviors whether anger or like even uh, doing japa together like making these kind of rules that we have to very well go ahead continue i'm listening i just have to just yeah. divert for a second like doing like kind of one japa together guru maharaj or like doing at least one aarti together in the evening so cool. that really really yeah. really uh, so that's really helpful guru maharaj but i am not like it's just like a journey so i am not Sandeep really Prashad. a very great parent but it's all krishna oh. mercy whatever yeah you directed them in a spiritual way and they were inclined to it then that's good yeah they're a good role model for other children to learn from Thank you, Guru. I can see one hand raised by Sudha Mata Ji, Guru Maharaj. Hari Krishna. Um, yeah, Hari Krishna, Guru Maharaj, Tanut Prana. Uh, please accept my respectful obeisances. Uh, I have a question, Maharaj. Um, like hmm. about kids, uh, like how do we uh, like um, instruct kids? Like uh, be very strict or be nice? because um my experience like uh, most of the scenarios like uh, i notice uh, like you know always like uh, i have to be very nice uh, with them to convince them to do something uh, if i be a little bit strict on them um, they actually uh, um, talk back i mean they don't listen uh, so how can i train myself like uh, you know um like uh, being nice always and uh, still achieve um, the objective i mean like uh, uh, do them no. their chores yes like if you're getting results by being nice then that's good continue but if you're being nice and you're not following then the alternative is that you should be strict you give them a chance by being nice If that works that's wonderful that keeps nice relationships uh -huh. but if they don't follow then you have to you can't give up your responsibility because they didn't accept it you have to then you have to get a little stronger mm -hmm. so you also <laughs> say, you say well i'm you know i'm telling you in a nice way this is how this needs to be done and but then or this you should have avoid this then but if they don't then you can't say well well i was nice and it, i tried and then that's it and then you have to be a little stronger with them mm -hmm. what, what is the, what is their ages um uh, they are like 13 and uh, 9 uh, yeah so they they they're still under the guidance of parents and so they're mm -hmm. still required to listen to their parents mm -hmm, mm -hmm. uh thank you maharaj so small scenario maharaj like let's say like uh, you know small like a uh, thing a uh, play date is there like so if i say like no to play date uh, like uh, you know uh, uh, he'll become very out of control but um, when i say yes uh, he'll go and he'll come back and he'll mold, uh, his mood will become very happy and uh, what i know is a small scenario but what i noticed is every time i have to impress him like i have to like really please him so is that a real thing to do every time sometimes we have to be very well, strict yeah. they say you know and what is they what is that saying spare the rod and spoil the child that's an old saying yeah they have they have to let the you have to let them they have to let the they have to know you're in control not them <laughs> Yeah. They're not they're not able to be in control. They have to learn the responsibilities of growing up and then when they get older they can take control of their life in a more meaningful way in a more uh what we say successful way. 
but now they have to learn. So you give them time for playing, but then you also give them time for other things. It's not that, that what, every time they want to play, we have to say yes. <laughs> if you feel that it's not a time for them to play, then you have to say, well, actually you, you should be doing this at this time or doing something different. Yes, Maharaj. Yeah, thank you so much, Maharaj. Thank you. Yes. I, I, I saw, fortunately, this person, I won't mention any names at all. Her father told me, I never tell her, I never told her what to do in her life. He feels like the child should grow up automatically and let them learn by their own. But when I saw at one point, when she became a teenager, she became suicidal. And it wasn't for Krishna consciousness that came in right at that time. It saved her actually. And now she's a wonderful devotee. But, you know, her father was, I talked to her father first and he said, no, never, never tell them what not to do. Just let them express themselves according to their nature. But this is wrong. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Thank you Maharaj. Thank you so much. Yeah, so um, I, I see you're, you're very sweet natured, so you can use your sweet nature to be strict too. If you know how to do, I'm sure you know how to do that. Be sweet, but be strong. <laughs> Thank you, Maharaj. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, so you can be strong at the same time. Keep the sweetness in your in your in your way of delivering things. And sometimes nowadays you have to explain to the children why you're doing what you're doing, and that's good. That helps them to understand that it's not just I'm, you're doing it not just to restrict them, but there's a reason behind it, and it's for their own good. That's the point. They have to learn that the refusals you give them is for their benefit. Then you, you, need, you need to explain that. Not each time, but many, many times it's required. Yeah. Thank you, Maharaj. Yes, Maharaj. Thank you so much. I hope I helped. I don't know. It sounds like... Uh, yes, Maharaj. I mean, a little bit help me. I mean, definitely I'll try to apply those things. Yeah. And Maharaj, like you mentioned, like uh, um, uh, Srimad Bhagavatam verse, Maharaj, can you please tell me the verse number, Maharaj? Like... Uh, um, don't become a parent, that one? Yeah, yes, yes, Maharaj. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's Rishab Day's teachings to his sons. And it's the fifth canto, the fifth chapter, verse number 18, not eight. Kuruna sasya janane sasya pitanda sasya janana sasya syat daivam latatsyan lapatista sasya namochi adya samupeta mithyam. Well, this is a very strong, this is right to the point. It says, translation, one who cannot deliver his dependence from the path of repeated birth and death should never become a, can't see the rest of the translation, spiritual master, father, husband, a mother, or a worshipful demigod. And then you can read the purport and that'll give you more insight of what is being said. Beautiful, beautiful, Maharaj. Thank you. But these, these instructions in this particular chapter are really, really right to the point. They don't allow for any considerations. They get right into the essence of the point that's being made. So in some, some of the cases, we need to hear explanations and discussions on these, these verses so we can 
understand in a practical way uh, how to look at these these points and see where the application fits and where it doesn't fit. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Thank you for my obeisances. Thank you, Maharaj. So thank you so much. Madhavi, you have two wonderful children. Sorry, Maharaj, you're asking me? I was talking to Madhavi. She oh, okay, okay, sorry. There. You also have two wonderful children, right? <laughs> Although I don't know them. <laughs> yeah, Madhvi Mataji was trying to speak, uh, but she, Mataji, you are on mute. Madhvi Mataji. Sorry, sorry about that. So, with my, my tricks are that I would uh, tell them nicely one time to do something what they should be doing and explain them. Second time, I tell them you have we haven't finished what I do. Third time, and then I don't speak. Doesn't matter, they come to me. So they know that if mom said second and if he's going to be third, they are in trouble. And dad will be then strict as well. So they would softly come and please me up. Mom, what is wrong? Sorry, sorry, mom. Mm -hmm. So that's another way to do it. But give them love as well as the same thing and explain, then explain them. Because when they are strict, they want to do something they won't listen, not to the explanation sometimes. My kids have been very good from young age. They've been in Krishna consciousness as well. Uh, and I've been, I would take them to socially as well as spiritual place, seeing family as well, and to make them learn how to respect adults and younger. Like now my mom is in a uh, <clears throat> nursing home and my brother is scared of bringing her home, but my both children are saying, mom, bring, we'll help you up. Bring uh, Nanny home. Let's skip her for a while. And then uh, uncle will realize that then she can go there. Then he will hurry up to do his house up, which he has to yeah. do. That means they learned responsibility. That's good. Yeah, so they learn their responsibility when we are like my husband's been up had operation, they know every time they know what they have to do it, you know, I don't have to tell them. Now they've grown up, but yeah. So yeah, they I have know, to be but... mother sometime and sometimes friend, sometimes mother. If we just become friend to them all the time, then again, they, they are spoiled. And we have to give them something. Like when they were very young, I used to make them clean the house with me. And then when my husband used to come home, they used to complain, daddy, we clean the house and mom, mom is wiping up again on that. So what's the point of us cleaning house? <laughs> 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 so this dad was saying, she's just checking and uh, inspecting. So then when mom cleans, you can inspect her. Has she cleaned it properly? <laughs> so yeah, so that is also, we have to love and we have to give time. We, we had first in uh, this country, first uh, say priest or something came and we had a uh, subtitle that that was Morari Bapu was the first person, some saintly person came in this country and he had subtitle that. And the first thing he used to tell, I know you all have come from Uganda and Africa and didn't have any money. So her parents has to work, that's fine. But you lost your culture here coming to here. Because you made uh, uh, fridge as a mother and the TV as a father. Do you understand? <laughs> so because yeah. mom, mom makes everything and put it in the fridge and leaves a microwave just to touch that they don't get hurt or burn. And the uh, TV is there what they learn from father. So other, when, if other parents has, doesn't have time how can they learn? How can they get our culture? So always husband should be responsible working 
and the mother should be part-time according to their age and according to their growth, mother mm -hmm. should be looking after them and cultivating them. And again, for single parents to say, and again, he, he point one thing as well. And then my father-in-law told me as well, wrote to me when my daughter, uh, when we got married and when my daughter was born, when we got married, he said, just one instruction, plan to have your children if you can raise them properly. It means you, you earn your, enough money that if a mother doesn't have to work or she can work part time. Oh, then when my, my daughter was born, my father liked because of our, uh, our culture that the girl has to be married, we have to give a dowry and all that was at that time. He said to me, personally, he said, whatever jewelry, whatever money he's got from your parents on the wedding as a gift, in any circumstances, don't let your, uh, my son to touch it. That's my instruction to you. So that will help you for your daughter's wedding. Thank you, so, Marvi. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you very much. We're going late. Hope that helps. Yeah, thank you for thank you for helping us understand from your own personal experience. Hare Krishna. Krishna. Well, Hare thank Krishna. you, devotees. We have to conclude here. So um, I, I hope this particular topic was edifying to some degree. We keep the spiritual perspective foremost, and that will help us understand clearly and um, with surety how to manage everything else okay so i'll see you all tomorrow thank you very very much guru maharaj for giving this valuable time and association also thanks to devotee for joining this session shila prabhupada ki jai gurudev ki jai anant koti vishnu brand ki jai